Good morning, children. Good morning. What a blessing to see all your faces again. I love to see all these faces in here that have a hunger for the Word of God. Today, we want to drop something in the garbage and take something new home. We want to drop something of our brains into the garbage, and we want to take something new out of the Word of God home. It's very important that we get a renewal of the mind. Because the enemy is like, what does it say in one Bible verse? He runs around like a roaring liar, seeking who he may devour. That's what he does to all of us. As soon as we come into this world, he is ready to devour us. And that is why as we get older, we need a renewal of the mind. But the enemy will not stop to bug us. I know that when I was growing up, I always felt like I was not enough. I know when I was growing up, it wasn't... Parents did not make the right decision on a lot of things. And they messed up. We mess up too, sometimes, without even wanting it, right? But I remember, I always felt like I was not enough because I was a girl. There were so many things that my brother got to do, but I couldn't. And every single time I would ask my mom, why does my brother get to do it but not me? She would always say, because you're a girl. It always made me feel like I was not enough. If I was only a boy, I might be enough then. But now because I was a girl, I was not enough. No matter what I asked my mother, if usually it was a no, and when I asked why is it always a no, every single time the answer would be because you are a girl. And I know we can feel like that sometimes. We can feel like our brothers matter more than we matter. And the boys, of course, the enemy is right there ready to devour the boys and say, the girls are better than you. They are more, they are more loved than you. And we want to set that straight today. We want to see in the word of God, what does God's word say? Who is loved and who is not? And God's word makes it very clear that we are loved equally, and so does your parents. As if you believe it or not, it's the truth. And we want to drop our garbage today, the lies of the enemies, and we want to get down the truth in our heads. What does God say? How much does he love us? And how much does our parents love us? We have to understand, as boys and girls, we are uniquely different. We are very different from one another. We have very different needs. And we want to look into the Word of God. How can we get the truth down into our spirits and live out the fullness of God? Let us go to Genesis 1, 26 and 27. And one thing, children, what I would love for you to do, next time bring your Bibles and read along. I know I got mine marked. It doesn't take me very long to get there. But I would love for you to... Get more familiar with the Word of God where this and that is written, and then read along. Because I feel like if I read along and someone brings a message, it gets way deeper into my spirit than when I'm just hearing it. So next time, please bring your Bibles and read along. So Genesis 1, 26 and 27 says, Then God said, Let us make human beings in our image to be like us, they will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that hurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. And in, in the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. What does this tell us? Not just male are important, not just female is important. Both are very important. God created them both in the image of himself. Imagine yourself. You might wonder something, what does God look like? Just go look in the mirror and you see a glimpse of God. Because God created all of you, each individual, like him. Isn't that wonderful? That we get to see God as we live on this earth? Because if we look ourselves, we see a piece of him. We do. And that is wonderful. Genesis 2, 7. 
Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and then the man became a living person. Has anyone ever worked with clay? Looks like many of you have. That's awesome. How about Play-Doh? Looks like all of you have. That is awesome. Have you ever tried to form a man? Stephanie has. I see that. That's, that's, that is so fun. Oh, Lena did? That's awesome. You know, one time on it was Aaron's birthday, he wanted a swimming pool. And he wanted people in a swimming pool. So I was busy trying out of uh, fondant creating people. And then I got a phone call from my friend. She's like, hey, what are you doing? And I said, well, I am forming man. And she's like, isn't that God's job? <laughs> that was so funny. And I'm like, yeah, but Mr. Aaron wanted people on his cake, so I'm forming man. And that was so fun. Can you just imagine? Just think for a moment. While God was creating the first man, he got the dust. And dust doesn't stick together. So in my imagination, I'm thinking he might have used water or something. And he made clay, and then he formed the man. Do you have a question? Never mind. I was thinking, but there was no water, but then that was before he created the human body. That's right. So think about it. He has his clay in his hands, and he forms us. I know one Bible verse, I'm not sure how it's written exactly, but it talks about where someone is asking God to, to form him. And his, you know, the way, shape him the way that he designed him to be, you know, in our inner being. But that's another topic. But it's so interesting for me to just, just let it sink in for a moment. He has this clay in his hands and he's forming this man in his own image. And then he lays down upon the man and breathes his breath, his living breath into him and he becomes a living being. That is so incredible. Genesis 2.18 Then the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. Does anyone know who the helper is? Afia. Jesus. Aaron? Jesus. Billy? Uh, Eve. Eve, there we go. God created a woman. God created a woman for him. Let us go to Genesis 2, 21 and 23. It says, So then the Lord God created the man to help. Created, a man, God created crea them. Okay, hold on. Let me restart. So the Lord God created the man to fall, fall into a deep sleep. While the man slept, the Lord God took out one of the man's ribs. And closed it back up. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib. And he brought her to, to the man. Isn't that so awesome? And you know, there's a reason for why he took a rib and not a piece of his foot. I'll get to that in a minute. At least a man exclaimed, This one is born of my bones and my flesh. From my flesh. And she will, she will be called woman because she was taken from a man. When God created Eve, he took a rib. And there's a meaning behind it. There's a reason why he took a rib. God wanted, from the beginning when God created the earth, he wanted unity. We know there's so much division these days. That was never God's plan when he started the earth. When he started off, he wanted unity. I know when I was growing up, women were made more like slaves to the man. Women were nothing else there to make sure the man's needs were met, his clothes were washed, his food was there, the house was clean. We were made to just be a slave to our husbands. That is how, when I was growing up, that's what, what we learned. But that was never the, the will of God. See, if... God took a rib because he wanted man and woman to walk side by side, work together in unity. It says he gave him a helper, not a slave, a helper. But sometimes we as girls, 
Once we understand that we're no longer a slave to our man, that God created us for a purpose and for a reason, we overreact. And we start to tremble upon the boys and the man. And we think, now we are great. Now we can do whatever we want and we can just tremble down the boys. Absolutely wrong. And the boys, remember, I want you to remember one thing. You might be young still, but if you ever get married, girls, remember to honor your husband and to work aside along with him in unity. You don't over trample over them just because you understand that you are that you are somebody in Christ. And boys, remember, you treat your women, your wife, with dignity and love and respect. And I have three boys, and if they will treat their wives as slaves, remember, boys, you will have a visit from your old grandma, or maybe from your mama. You can, you can assure that. I will be there with a double-edged sword to correct you, because that is not right. We as girls, we're not slaves. And girls, the men are not to be trampled upon. You are both equally loved in God's kingdom. You are both valued, and God took a rib representing that he wants you to work side by side together. And just when you go play children, you have to work together as a team. Boys and girls, you work together as a team. I know when I was growing up, we were not allowed to play with boys. They literally had a fence sometimes. The girls were on one side, the boys on the other side. We were not allowed to play together. We were not allowed to connect. And then when we grow up and we get married, now we're supposed to connect and, and, and know how to work together. And that's what made marriage so hard because we didn't know much about boys because we were always disconnected. We were not allowed to connect. And that's what I want to teach you children. There are boundaries of how boys play with girls. They can't be so rough because girls are weaker. The Bible says it very clear in one verse that girls are weaker than boys. Not to put you girls down, but you are weaker. God made you different. And girls, when you play with boys, you understand boys are different. You have to play different than when you would play with a girl. So we have to understand our uniqueness, and we have to work together as a team. Side by side, just like married couples, you as children, you have to play together as a team. Side by side, boys and girls have boundaries, but do the will of the Father. Let us go to Galatians 3, 26 and 29. It says, For you are all children of God through faith in Jesus Christ, and all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ like putting on new clothes. There is no longer Jew or Greek slave or free, male or female, male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And now that you belong to Christ, you are the true child of Abraham, and you are the heirs of God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. There is no difference. Why does it say Greek or Gentile and all that stuff here? Because there are many people. Today, there's many different faiths. Some call themselves Buddhists, some call them Muslims, some call themselves, um, what's the other one? Some people don't say they don't believe in anything. <clears throat> but there's only one God, and that's what it says here, Greek, Gentile. It just means that we're all equal. If we, it doesn't matter what your background is, it doesn't matter what you called ourselves before, if we believe in Jesus Christ, we're all equal, equally loved, equally chosen, and he wants to use all of us. I know when I was growing up, I was being told God doesn't want to use women in his kingdom, only boys. Boys were the one that get to preach, to tell others about the good news. Everything was about the man. The girl was down there on the floor, nothing like a slave, and the man were on top, and they get to do everything. God wants to use them. God has a purpose and a plan for them, but not for the girls. And that's not the truth. That's why I'm so happy for God's word. And that God gave me the wisdom to start to understand and read his word and find out the truth. 
We are all equally loved by God, and he wants to use each and every one of you, and you're all unique in your own way. Let us go to 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1 through 14, and let us see the purpose of man and girls and boys, both of you. Now, dear brethren and sisters, it talks about both of you. It does not talk about just one. It talks about both of you. Regardless your question about the special ability that the Spirit gives us, I don't want you to misunderstand this. You know that when you were still pagans, what does pagans mean? Another religion that is outside of the real God. You are led astray and swept along the worship spirit, um, speechless idols. So I want you to know that no one speaking by the Spirit of God will curse Jesus. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Only those that are born again, only those that accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, can confess that Jesus is Lord. So that is one thing how you know where you're standing. If you can truly say it out of your heart that Jesus is Lord of, of your life, you know that you are God's child. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, service but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but in but it is the same God who does the work in all of us. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. We can help each other. If we would have all the gifts, we wouldn't need each other, and there would not be unity. God is all about unity. We need each other. We need to work together, and we will see it as we read along. To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same Spirit gives message of special knowledge. The same Spirit gives great faith in another. And to someone else, the one Spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to pro perform miracles and another the ability to to prophesy, he gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from God, is from the Spirit of God, or from another spirit. Still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages, while another is given the ability to inter interpret what is being said. It is the one and only Spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, some are free, but we have all been baptized into one body and one spirit, and we all are called. <coughs> To share this, and we and we all share the same spirit. Doesn't matter who you are, boy or girl, gen, if whatever your religion was before you came to Christ, we are all together in one body, and we all have the same spirit, and we all need to work together in harmony, hand in hand. And just because I have the healing, of, I have the gift of healing. You have the gift of prophesying does not mean that God loves me more or God loves you more. He made us all uniquely different and the Spirit decides which gift you are capable of handling and working for the best in the kingdom of God. We all have a gift and I would love if we all knew our gifts. I'm hoping that the Holy Spirit will help us all to understand what our gifts are and that we can work, each of us, on our own gifts, that we can run our own race. We cannot run somebody else's race. 
if Jake has the gift of healing, and I'm practicing healing, what do you think is going to happen? I'm trying to run his race, and it's not going to work for me. Because God has called him for that gift, not me. And if God has called me to preach, and Afia was trying to preach, how do you think that's going to work? It's not going to do so well. Because God has called me to preach, not her. That's how it is with all of us. We're not supposed to run somebody else's race. We're supposed to ask God, seek the Lord with all our hearts to reveal what our gift is and then run our own race. And God will bless that race. And your mom and dad love you equally, if you believe it or not. That is a lie from the enemy if you feel like you are not enough in your family. Let me tell you one story. Well, before I do that, let me first go back to what I have written down here, what I wanted to talk about, and then we'll get to the story. God used Moses and Aaron mightily, mightily. They were men. But God also used women mightily back in the day, and he still does. Does anyone know the story of Moses and Aaron and Joshua? Do you know? George? Do you know the story? The do you know the story? Have you read the story of Moses, Aaron, and Joshua? Yes, it's wonderful. What about Diana and Esther? Has anyone read that story? Does anyone know where the story of Moses and Aaron is written? Joey? A little bit in Genesis and Genesis and the Exodus. Got that right. What about the story of Diana? Where is that story you read? I thought I would challenge you today to read the word of God more. <laughs> the story of Diana is written in Judges. I didn't know that either. I had to look it up too. So I have to challenge myself too because I'm not here to just preach to you. I'm preaching to myself as much as I'm preaching to you. The story of Diana, if you want to read it, it is written in Judges. It's a wonderful story how God used that woman. But now I want to tell you a story. To get more... Joey, first good question. Was it... Uh... Never mind. Okay. Um, to help you understand more about your earthly life with your mom and dad, I want to tell you a story. There was um, this little girl. We are all uniquely different, like I already said. Some people don't care to be alone. Some people want to be alone. Some people have a great desire to share their lives, their thoughts, their hearts with somebody else. And there was this little girl. She has such a desire to share her life with somebody else. But her mother wasn't there for her. She did have sisters. But like it is so many times, in life where we make the wrong decision. That little girl got pushed away because she was younger. Let me tell you something, children. That is absolutely not the will of the Father. God never said, you have to be a certain age until I want to use you in my kingdom. God never says, if you're a certain age, that's when I'm going to love you. He loves you regardless of your age, regardless of your differences, and we need to do the same. Age don't matter. Not to God, should not matter to you. I do understand sometimes when you play and you have different ages, especially when you play school, it can be very hard. Because I understand when we do craft in here, it can be very hard. Because if I have so many different ages in here, then I need different crafts because your brain is not fully developed the same. As you get older, your brain is more developed. You can do different crafts. I do understand that sometimes it can be difficult when you play certain games and you have certain ages. But we should never push somebody out. We should always figure out a solution to fix it that we can still work together in unity and in harmony and to love, that everyone can feel love and special, right? But this is what it was. She got pushed away because she was younger. She always felt alone and forgotten. And she desired to share her life with someone, but she didn't. And then the day came she got married. She was very excited that one day God was going to give her a daughter 
and she was going to share that life with her daughter. God was so amazing, and he blessed her with three beautiful boys. If a woman can bear children, it's nothing but the grace of God, and it is so wonderful. It is an amazing gift of God. But here she was. God blessed her with boys and no girls. She, quite, she didn't quite understand why that had happened. But she was so thankful for her boys. She loved them. She treasured them so much and spent so much time together with her boys, trying all her best to love them, make them feel like they're on top of the world. Like they say sometimes, I love you to the moon and back. She loved her boys to the moon and back. But yet she still felt empty because we're uniquely different. And you all know that. Because we have boys and girls in this class and you play together, you are uniquely different. Girls play different stuff than, than girls play, play different stuff than boys. Do boys play different stuff than girls do? Boys are not interested in makeup and hair and and all that sorts of things, right? You know that. And girls are not so interested in wrestling and doing all that stuff. Like, that's just not a girl thing. What if I am? You are? Yes. Some girls might do, but not. You do too. That's awesome. <laughs> Get a little mixed in there, right? But most don't, right? Like, we have our own unique differences. As the boys were getting older and they were becoming men, they started to go off and do their own thing. You know, she was happy with her boys. She loved them. She still does. But the boys started to go do their own man thing, and she was left alone. She had nobody to share her life with. To do hair, to do makeup, to do nails, to go out shopping. Like, what boy wants to be in a girl's dress shop? Is that fun, boys? No. No. There we go. What about you girls? When your dad goes and wants to shop for tools. Is Me, that Adam, fun? It's so fun. I love doing that. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm being challenged today. Is there some girls that don't like it? Lily doesn't. Lena doesn't. I don't like it either. I don't like tools. I mean, yes, I certainly don't like But if, if Jake just wants to go to Canadian Tire and just walk around and look at the tools like... Please leave me in the car. I, usually I stay in the car. Like I, I'm fine. You guys go ahead. And you know, that's how it was with this, with this lady. As their boys were getting older, when they were younger, she got to drag them along into the girls' shop and to look at all these girl things. But they were getting older. They don't want to be there. And she understands. But the point came where she hit her low point again. And she felt this unbelievable despair again, alone and forgotten, because she has no one to share her life with. Do you think that that means she doesn't love her boys? No. No, absolutely not. But that is where the enemy comes and tells these boys, you are not loved, you are not enough. If you were only a girl, your mom would love you more. That is completely a lie from the devil. And that needs to go. Just because she has a desire to have a girl to, sh to share her life with someone does not mean she doesn't love her boys. And just like that, if there is someone in here, I know there is, that only have girls. I know my aunt and uncle only had girls. My uncle, he was dreaming for that boy. Why? He wanted... He wanted so badly to have someone to share, to share his life with and to do all the hard work, but he didn't. So my cousins had to do a lot of hard work that the girls were not built to do. And some of my cousins are suffering greatly today with health issues because they had to do so many heavy liftings that were not made for the girls because there was not a boy in the family that could help the dad. Do you understand that there is a great need of both in a family? Do you understand that, children? Yes. Yes. There we go. There is a great need and there is a desire. Mom's desire to have a daughter, 
to spend time with them. Dads have a desire to have a son to spend time with them. But that doesn't mean that you are not enough or you are not loved equally. If the enemy comes and tells you you're not enough because you're a girl or a boy, you tell the devil, get behind my back and you get out of here. You stop believing the lies what the devil tries to implant in your brains. You are enough and you are loved equally by God and by your parents. And just because your brothers might get to do different things than you girls does not mean your mom and dad don't love you enough. We are uniquely different. We develop uniquely different. And mom and dad understand what is best for you and what you are capable of doing. And that is why you get to do different things. But that doesn't mean you're not equally loved. God loves you equally, and so does your mom and dad. And I want to leave you with one Bible verse. Very, very amazing Bible verse. It is in Ephesians 3.18. It says, And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ through it is too great to understand. Okay, hold on. Let me read number 19 again. May you experience the love of Christ through it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power and comes for, that comes from God. My prayer is today for you children that you will understand God's love, how long, deep and wide it is that he has for you. He loves you equally. Don't let the devil always tell you you're not enough. You should be somebody else. Because that is a lie. Believe the word of God. Believe the truth. And the truth will set you free. You will be able to live in the fullness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, I have a few things that I want to explain to you. I forgot about these. We're just going to do them separately. But who knows what this is? Lena? check your temperature or That's, something? Yeah, this is to check. You could do it on you, but it's more to test, I think, what is it for? Water. Water, yeah, stuff like that. Or, what, what is this Or for? room temperature. Yeah, room temperature, there we go. Forgot. What is this, Kelly? Measuring. Measuring what? Measuring water. Measuring cup. How about this one? Joey? Measuring spoon. There we go. How about this one? Measuring tape. Measuring tape. There we go. It's a measuring tape. What do all these things have in common? Measuring stuff. Measuring stuff. You got it. They got measuring in common. But you see how uniquely different they are? They are created very uniquely different. Very uniquely different. But they all have the same thing in common. You are all created uniquely different, but you all have one thing in common. You all carry God's Spirit, and God's Spirit is there to help us love each other and work together in unity. God is all about unity, not diversity. Let us keep that in mind. We are all uniquely different, but we all carry the same thing. And by the Spirit and the power of God, we can work together in love and in unity. Hallelujah.